So for this step, we're in step 13, sorry, step uh, 13, we're actually going to be using Gorilla Glue and a 532 drill bit. Now we've attached this, attached this to a hand drill, something so, it's a precision hand drill. You normally know, just kind of twist it in there. So we don't want to use the drill and get all crazy on us right now. The reason why is because we're going to be attaching the hubs to the wheels. Okay, and so for this, again, you need the hand drill with a 5 uh, five by 32 drill bit and some Gorilla Glue. Now, the reason we know we need this is because we earlier, earlier on we tried to slip one of these hubs into the wheels and we couldn't. So they said go ahead and use the drill bit to kind of make it a little bit bigger. Now, it looks like this is not big enough. So we're going to have to get a bigger uh, bit to go ahead and uh, get that to work. So we're going to go and get our whole drill bit kit. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to upgrade here. Let's put that one back. Let's see, we might need to use one of these here. That's still too small. Still too small for what we're trying to do here. So basically, we're just kind of slipping in the drill bit to figure out which one we need to do. So here we are slightly deviating from the instructions, so this might help you in constructing the kit and know what to expect. Okay. Okay, so that seems about right. Actually, you know what, we actually made a mistake there. We had the wrong bit in the wrong section. So this is the 532. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of do it with our hand. See if that's going to be enough. And we're just kind of boring it out. Let's see if that's going to be enough here. Yep, sure enough it was. We just need to do a little bit of that. Let's see if this works for the other one. So again, you know, I guess we're just doing this because maybe there's little plastic edges inside there from the manufacturing process that got stuck. And it uh, didn't allow that little that hub to go in there. So we bore that one out and Let's see. Nope, it doesn't fit in yet. So we're just kind of boring it out a bit. Nope, not here. There we go. Fits on the other side. All right, so we've got that part. Let's see. Okay, so next step is now we've just got, we didn't put it in all the way, we left it out just a smidge. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of Gorilla Glue. Now Gorilla Glue you should be able to pick it up at your local store. Could be CVS, uh, Walgreens, uh, or even a, see them at Home Depot. And you're just going to put a little dab or two of this stuff. that and uh, we're just going to kind of flip it over and we don't want to mess up the workspace so we're just going to take this and push it through <coughs> excuse me so there we have it that's one And here we go with the second one. Okay. And there you have it. These are mounted flush and they're good to go. So that completes step 13. Now let me just go ahead and put these drill bits away. Close up my Gorilla Glue.
Okay, so at this point, we're going to actually stop. We want to let the Gorilla Glue sit. And we want it to set properly and have a firm grip uh, before we start doing anything. Because the next step is actually step 14, which is actually we're going to be mounting the wheels onto the motors. And I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to do that while this is still wet. So I'm going to give it about 15 minutes or so. And if it's still not uh, dry enough, then I'll give it a little bit more. And we'll come back to you in a bit. All right, so we're back. And uh, we think that it's set good enough for now. Uh, one of the key things you want to make sure of is not to let it sit too long because you do have to do some final screwing in. There's a, a little nut here, or a little screw. So basically it says slide the wheels onto the motor shafts. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Just slide the wheels on and it looks like let's see something here okay thing we're trying to make sure of is that we don't we give it some space there you've worked with uh, motor shafts before but typically the shafts aren't round there's a flat edge so you want to make sure that wherever you're screwing in this part it's the flat part so on this one it's actually right here the camera can't show you that so the other part you want to make sure of is to make sure you leave a little gap so that way it doesn't touch <coughs> so the next step here is we're going to go ahead and put this one in Okay, so we've got that one in place. Oh boy, it's a smaller one here. Alright, so we've tightened that one up. There you have it. Now those are screwed in. And you can actually hear the motor spinning. So that is part 14. Now moving on to 15 is where we're actually going to get into looking up the receivers. Okay. So the next steps is just basically plugging this all in. So, there's only really two things we need to plug in. The power, which are these here, and these into our receiver. So, let's go ahead and look at this receiver and see what we got to do here. Now, the receiver is marked with channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a battery. So, let's see here. According to this, plug the right tiny ESC into channel 1. So the right would be this one here. Okay, so let's plug that one into channel one. Now what it says to do is to make sure that the black or brown, so in this case this one's brown, is uh, closest to the edge of the receiver. So the edge is going to be out here. So we're going to make sure we're plugging in like so. That plugged in pretty easily. And we're going to go ahead and plug in channel 2 for the left one. And that's it. We're plugged in. Before we actually finish putting together, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and run a test. The next step is here 17. So 17 basically is mounting everything in place and putting everything in, in, in order. What we're going to do is we're going to run a sample test to make sure that everything is working okay before we actually put it all together. So for that we're going to need two 9 volt batteries and we're going to need to have a receiver ready to go. So give us a second, we'll be back in the next video and we'll have this powered up and we'll have batteries and ready to go. Alright, so we're back and we just wanted to show you quickly what we've done. 
So we went ahead and we put in the two batteries. Now they're just kind of loosely uh, sitting in there right now. Nothing fancy with the receivers here. And we have our remote control. So what we're going to do is, so we don't ruin anything, we're going to pick up the unit. We're just going to kind of emphasize on the wheels so you can see them spinning. So this works pretty well. So we're looking pretty good here. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish up and what the next video you'll see us actually we'll put the unit together. We're going to mount everything nice and neat and have everything, you know, all the cables managed nice and neat inside and we won't have anything to worry about. Um, we hope that this has helped you and we'll show you what we've got coming next.